Hey guys, welcome back to Greg's Fish Room. Today, fall is officially here, and that means it's time to shut down the aquaponics greenhouse and all of the outdoor summer tubs. So, come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right, guys, so I think the first question, the obvious question to ask is, when's the right time to shut down my outdoor tubs in the fall? And that answer depends entirely on where you live. So what I do personally is I go online to any of the weather websites, I type in my zip code, and I look at the historical daily average temperatures as well as the high temperatures and the low temperatures. And it depends on what kind of fish you have as well. If you have tropical fish, you probably want to bring your fish indoors when your nighttime temperatures are starting to reach mm, 60 to 65 degrees. Now, um, it can get much hotter during the day, it can get much colder at night, that's the highs and the lows, but what you're really concerned about is the low temperatures because those, that water can just get too cold at night and your fish can get shocked and then disease can set in and all kinds of bad stuff can happen. So it's better to bring them in early. So when your nighttime temperatures, your historic nighttime temperatures are starting to hit 60, 65 for tropical fish, move them indoors. If you have subtropical fish, like the ones I have out here, I usually keep them outside a little bit longer until the nighttime temperatures hit around 50 to 55 degrees. The white clouds and the rainbow shiners and, and some of the, like the juvenile goldfish, they don't really care what temperature it is. They do fine at lower temperatures. So I'm able to extend my growing season outdoors in the greenhouse with those subtropical fish which is pretty nice. All right, we've got some nice natural sunlight coming into the greenhouse right now. So let's take a quick tour to see what the greenhouse looks like right now. Take a look at the fish and how we're going to catch all of these fish in the greenhouse. Okay, first things first, we've got a pile of floating plants that are headed for the compost bin. That's right, it's really tough to keep these alive. Uh, over winter indoors, namely the water hyacinth and the full-size water lettuce. They just, they never get enough sunlight indoors, so uh, it's best to just compost those and pick them up new in the spring. So most of those have already been removed from the inside of the greenhouse, and all of the floating plants were previously in these six Laguna tubs. As you can see, no more plants. What we did with a lot of the floaters, we had hornwort in here, um, we had some salvinia, some frog bit, um, and a few other things. We, uh, red root floaters, we brought all of those to the Keystone Clash recently and uh, essentially just gave them away. And so, uh, able to spread that plant love around a little bit before it gets too cold out here for all those plants. And then the last two bins there had that um, hyacinth and water lettuce in it and uh, as you can see they got quite a bit of nice natural sunlight throughout the summer but it's time to take them all down so one of these ponds has already been siphoned down about uh, three quarters of the way the rest of these are still operational uh, we've still got water flow through these and the first thing I wanted to take a look at here were some of the goldfish there you go. You see them darting around? We've got at least four goldfish in this Laguna tub. There they are. They're about, oh, two inches, two and a half inches long. They got some nice coloration to them. And I think there's at least two or three in this tub as well. A little bit harder to see because they've got more of the black coloration. Uh, along with two other goldfish that I already moved indoors. And these goldfish were hiding under those floating plants. I didn't even know they were there for the entire season. So this is what one summer's worth of growth looks like on goldfish eggs that were hatched in the spring, were not fed at all by me. No fish food was fed to these guys. They just survived naturally out here 
uh, in this Laguna tub. Now, what food was being fed to these guys? Well, whatever nature provided. So spiders fall into this all the time. There's flies all over the place that fall into this all the time. There's duckweed in these as well. They had plenty to eat. And so uh, it's always nice to see some new fish appear. And um, this year we've got at least eight or 10 goldfish. Last year I'd say we had about six or eight goldfish. And you wonder, how did they get in here? How did the eggs get in here? Well, this is one of those funny things. The 1,000 gallon pond outdoors has the adult goldfish in it. When they spawn and lay eggs and those eggs get fertilized, some of them fall down to the bottom of that pond and they get sucked up by the return pump. And that pump comes all the way through here through a UV sterilizer and uh, dumps them out, as you can see, into these tubs. And these tubs act kind of like a settling bin. And so those eggs settle out and they fall down to the bottom of these Laguna tubs and that's where they end up uh, growing out. I've got a, a few uh, koi pellets that I threw in here the last couple days when I realized they were actually fishing here. I, I tried feeding them a little bit but we're gonna get them moved in today and uh, indoors with the rest of the fish. Um, the rest of these ponds are pretty cleared out. We're gonna wait to knock these ponds down. We're just gonna catch these goldfish with a net and bring them indoors. And we're gonna leave these tubs actually running with water here until we're ready to shut off right before it starts to freeze. Uh, because this flow, this overflow, goes back down into the pond. And we wanna leave that system running so we get plenty of aeration uh, and we don't interrupt the cycle of the pond because that's staying up year round. All right, so with that, let's focus on these IBC totes. This is the real focus of the video here. We need to tear these down. And uh, this actually has a second pump that's pumping water into these. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug that pump. And the, the water pump is actually in the filter box um, that's over there in the bushes. And the reason I put it in there is because originally I had this all hooked up and that one pump down there pumped water into both sides and I ended up getting goldfish hatching in the IBC totes. And I did not want that because there are baby fish in here uh, from my white clouds and, and other subtropical species. And I didn't want those goldfish competing for food and I didn't want those goldfish potentially eating those, those baby fry. So what I did was I put a second pump in that over in that uh, filter box and that's pumping water into these IBC totes. So I'm going to shut that water off so that these become approximately 300 gallons, 250 to 300 gallons of just standing water and we're going to go ahead and drain these out. Now you'll notice we've got quite a bit of water lettuce that has grown on the top. I've actually scooped out half of it already so that we can sort of see inside. And we may get lucky and see some fish. There's a lot of fish in here. So we were definitely successful with our breeding. We'll just take a quick look and see if we can see any of the, the fish here. There's not too much glare. It's gonna be harder to see these. We'll definitely see them when they, when they come out, once I've uh, scooped them all out. But there was definitely breeding activity in all of these IBC totes and I can't wait to get an actual tally or at least the closest I can to how many fish are actually here. And uh, this might be the best view of what's going on here. Tons and tons of white cloud fry. You'll notice there are full size adults that look like they're still laying eggs there's mid-sized juveniles, and there's teeny tiny babies. And the size ranges are basically every single size you could possibly imagine between adult to basically newborn, like day old fry. And it's just amazing to see how many fry these white clouds have in a setup like this. Now, as we talked about previously, I had put these floating breeding baskets in at the beginning of the season. I found they were a little bit too small um, and the breeding and the egg laying wasn't happening like I wanted them to. 
So I just remove them and I let the fish free swim in their IBC tote and that seemed to work a lot better. So I ended up losing about a month in the beginning of the season with that experiment. I would say that experiment failed. If I was gonna try it again, I'd pick a much larger breeding basket, um, but we'll see how they do and we'll see uh, how many fry I actually recover. So how am I gonna do this? Well, we've got a just a piece of hose here with a very fine piece of sponge material on the end which has been tied up really tight um, so that no fish, hopefully, will get uh, sucked up by this, this tubing. And that's running down here into an empty stock tank. And um, what we have here is just a basket um, with a liner in it. This is actually like a paint screen uh, liner. So that's in a five gallon bucket and that's where our water is going to get siphoned down into. And the reason being is last year when I did this, um, I actually did lose a few fry, um, even with a pre-filter on the hose. Don't ask me how, uh, but it did happen, and I was a little upset by it. So better safe than sorry, uh, because I'm gonna start this siphon, and it takes so long to drain down, I'm gonna walk away, and I wanna make sure that when I come back, uh, I don't have any catastrophe on my hands. So worst case scenario is um, the fry get, do get sucked up somehow, or at least some of them do, and they're gonna be sitting in a five gallon bucket full of water in this nice mesh bag um, all together, and uh, I can deal with them uh, appropriately. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully this is just completely empty of fish when I come back, but it's set up that way just in case. Better safe than sorry. So. We're gonna to toss this in, we're gonna start the siphon. We're gonna drain this down, oh, probably about three quarters of the way down. And then we're gonna take a net and we're gonna start catching fish. And then we're gonna repeat that same process here for all four of these tubs, putting our fish in five gallon buckets, bringing those inside and temperature acclimating. I do have a piece of two inch or one and a half inch PVC here which is just strapped up here um, and that goes into the same bucket here so the two further IBC totes I'll still be able to reach them and I'll just put my siphon tube uh, down that and hopefully lower it to the point where that water can still drain out so that's what we're doing here today in the greenhouse well, let's get to it and let's clear these plants off the surface and we'll start draining water Okay, it's about an hour later, and you can see we are about halfway done draining this first IBC tote. This is a project that's gonna take all day, but you can see quite clearly now all of the fish down there. And the lower this water level drops, the easier it's gonna be to catch them out with a net. So we're gonna keep letting this drain until we're about three quarters of the way down and then we'll bust out the net and try to catch those guys. Happy to report that so far we have absolutely nothing in this basket here. Uh, a few flakes of food but that's really about it and our water is just gently overflowing here out of this bucket into this small stock tank and I did catch out my goldfish already and uh, they're in there right now. So I'll throw them in a bucket when I'm about ready to bring everything inside, but so far so good. Everything's working well. It's just a little slow to drain. I could speed up the process by getting a bigger hose, but um, I'm not really that concerned about it. And uh, I'd rather it be slow because that way if anything gets sucked up, it's not going to get harmed in the process. So. That's what we're up to, we'll check in later. 
while we're waiting for things to drain down, I wanted to show you a couple things. Uh, the first is the, the muck or the mulm that is uh, starting to form on the bottoms of these tubs. Again, they act as sort of settling ponds. All of the sort of detritus and debris and pieces of leaves and things that are just swirling around in the thousand gallon pond get sucked up and spit out into these tubs and then uh, all of that matter sort of settles out down to the bottom and this is what we're left with and there is heaps of this stuff like gallons of this stuff every year that I pull out of this uh, pond system and the the really important thing to note here is that this stuff doesn't smell it doesn't smell like fish food it doesn't smell like rotting waste it doesn't smell like there's any ammonia uh, being produced by this stuff because there isn't it's natural organic matter uh, mostly leaf litter and some fish poop and uh, some other things but it has been completely broken down to the point where it's not negatively impacting this pond system that I have going on here. It's just acting as a food source for all of the microbial life uh, that exists in this pond year round. And so I don't need all of it. In fact, if it builds up too much, um, it's going to be more of a hassle than anything else. But the important part to note here is that it's not particularly harmful um, to the pond system. And so uh, I do remove it at the end of the year. It comes back every year. And so that's what we got. It looks gross, but it doesn't smell one bit. One other thing that I wanted to show is um, all of these leaves. And so I made a couple of these mesh bags, these oversized mesh bags. And last fall, so an entire year ago, uh, I collected a bunch of leaves from my backyard, mostly oak leaves, and I overwintered them in the greenhouse. And then in the spring, I put them all in these mesh bags and I floated them in my IBC totes. And as you can see, they're still fairly intact. In fact, I could probably use these um, next year. And so I, I might just keep these in um, these containers after I drain them down. Um, but this is organic matter. And that's really the start of your food chain for your decomposers. So you can get energy from the sun and that can feed um, all of your algaes that are photosynthesizing and that creates energy at the, the bottom of the, the food chain for your pond. The other source is your decaying organic matter, whether that's a dead fish or extra food, uh, or in this case, leaves leaves break down incredibly slow and uh, as you can see here this is one year of being underwater or at least one full summer season of being underwater and they're still recognizable in terms of the type of leaf they are and as this slowly breaks down you've got decomposers that are slowly uh, consuming this organic matter and uh, creating what you see here, all of this detritus and whatnot. Uh, and this is an excellent food source for your infusoria, your very small life, because they feed on those decomposers. So um, this isn't adding like ammonia, it's not spiking my water parameters out here, it's just very slowly and naturally decomposing and it becomes just a built-in food source just like you would see in any pond that has trees around it um, there's going to be leaves inside the pond and so this is primarily what fed all of my fish all of my baby fry uh, as they were first being formed is um, these leaves providing that food source uh, for those paramecium those infusoria so that's what we got going on here Okay, about another hour has elapsed and we are about ready to start netting these fish out of this first IBC tote and I've got three more to go after this. So what I have here is just a standard aquarium net. I think this is like a 10 inch net 
and I zip tied it onto a wooden pole here. And really the easiest thing to do here is just swish this around in the water. And I want to be careful not to be too aggressive when I'm doing this because there's a lot of baby fish that I'm going to be catching here. So let's see if I can do this one-handed. You can see we've definitely got some in there. And we're gonna tip this over and just dump it into a five gallon bucket. There we go, first scoop. We probably got close to 100 fish. You can really see the size differences there. The full adult fish, some of them towards the bottom, some of those tinier ones up towards the top. So we're gonna continue to uh, net the fish out of here as this continues to drain down and essentially the lower the water level gets the easier it is to catch these fish and really the magic part comes when there's only like four or five inches of water and the net can reach the bottom and the top surface of the water uh, at the same time then it becomes real easy to catch them so we're going to try not to stir up too much of the muck on the bottom of the ibc tote um, and we're going to try to catch as many of those fish as we can before it drains all the way down to the bottom. At which point, we're just gonna have to catch the fish with whatever muck uh, is left on the bottom there, and uh, we'll have to sort out the fish from the, the debris at the end. But I should be able to catch 95% of the fish here uh, in the water column before we get down to the very bottom of this tank. So that's what I'm gonna do for the next 20, 30 minutes, and we'll check back in um when we've got a bucket full of fish okay many hours later we are draining our second tub this is going to be a long project that's going to go into the night as you can see the sun set we uh had dinner and then came back out to keep going here so this one's almost completely drained all the way down you can see the water that's left it's probably two or three inches it's completely kicked up, stirred up with a bunch of mulm. Um, I would say I probably have about 90% of the fish in this bucket here um, with maybe another 5% and most of the mulm in this bucket here. So I'm going to bring those inside and temperature acclimate them and get them in an aquarium. And funny enough, this bag that had all these leaves in it that was floating in that same IBC tote. Um, there's actually some adult fish in here as well. I don't know if they're going to come out. I think I spooked them. But um, I'm going to have to sort through these leaves um, tomorrow. And I'll just grab handfuls of leaves and put them in another tub. And then the, uh, the remaining fish, the white clouds, I will pull out here as well. So... That's IBC tote number one. This is IBC tote number two, which has the golden white clouds. And from what I can see, it appears like there are considerably less golden white cloud fry that made it. So I'll be interested to see once I'm able to drain this down and collect them, uh, what's actually here. It may have been a bad male-female ratio. Um, it may also be just weaker genetics because it's a golden morph and they're also probably a lot easier to find and potentially predate on um, because they have that that lighter golden color so I think this is gonna be my stopping point here uh, for tonight is the second coat uh, we'll bring the fish inside acclimate them and get them in the aquariums and then we'll head back out here tomorrow and we'll do totes number three and four Good morning, YouTube. This is the morning of day two of this project. Last night I was able to get probably 99% of the fish out of this first tub. I'm gonna go ahead and take a few more swipes at it before draining it down uh, the rest of the way. So I collected all the white clouds out of there last night. I also managed to drain down the golden white cloud tank. And let's see if we can get a little bit closer to them. You can see them scooting around down there in the bottom. And yeah, I don't really see a whole lot of fry in the golden white cloud uh, tank. 
which is kind of unfortunate, but you know, it's always an experiment. So last night I was also able to drain down the Rainbow Shiner tank and there are definitely fry in here. Uh, there's also one rogue, looks kind of like a golden white cloud, I'm not really sure, uh, in here. But not, not the numbers I was hoping for out of the Rainbow Shiner, at least not yet. I still need to collect them. And then the Vietnamese white clouds, uh, I think they did okay. I don't know that I got quite as many as just the regular white clouds, but uh, they seem to have done fairly well. They're a little bit smaller, so harder to harder to tell from way up here. So uh, next step here, now that we've drained all four of these IBC totes down, is to collect as many as you can with the nets, put them in the buckets, and then bring them inside and acclimate. So I'm gonna finish catching, finish draining, and then we'll head inside to look at the fish uh, once they're acclimated. All right, and here we are indoors. This is actually two weeks after acclimation, and I essentially took all of the fish that were in those IBC totes, and I put them into these 60-gallon breeder aquariums indoors. Now, I've got some good news, I've got some bad news, and I've got some terrible news. Uh, the good news is we definitely produced some baby fish. Um, this is the white cloud tank. And as you can see, there are adults, there are juveniles, and there are even some itty bitty little babies in this tank. I would say I probably started out with around four dozen of these outdoors. And I've got at least uh, 250 fish in here, I would estimate. So I've definitely um, got some white clouds from, from that IBC tote for sure. So that's the good news. Um, the bad news is I didn't even bother to put the golden white clouds in here. Instead, I just put the, the goldfish, the surprise goldfish babies in here. I didn't get any golden white cloud fry at all. Um, so that was quite the disappointment. So I just tossed them in one of my other aquariums for the time being. I'd say I probably only have around a dozen of those. Now, the Vietnamese white clouds uh, are down here, and we'll talk about these in a second, but as you can see, there are quite a few small fish in here. So we definitely got some Vietnamese white clouds as well. But this is what we need to focus on, and this is the terrible news part. Um, this is where the rainbow shiner should be, except none of them made it. Every single one of them died during the acclimation process. And um, I can only guess as to what caused it. So essentially I drained down their IBC tote. It had no flow, uh, no air in it. And then I caught those fish and they sat in a five gallon bucket, again, with no flow and no air uh, for a few hours while they temperature acclimated. And um, if you know rainbow shiners, they are actually quite large quite active fish and they like flow and they like oxygen. So what I might have done is uh, put them in a situation where um, there are just too many big fish in the bucket and uh, I may have misjudged how much oxygen they were using and they may have depleted their oxygen. Um, when I placed them in this tank, they were alive and they were alive for, I would say, around six hours, it seemed. So it's not like they immediately died uh, but it could have been a complication from that, which uh, did them in. Uh, the water parameters are the same. The pH is the same. I adjusted for the, the temperature acclimation over a period of two or three hours. And uh, yeah, none of them made it. All the goldfish made it. All the white clouds made it. I didn't lose a single one. All of the rainbow shiners died. So yeah, I guess it could also be something that might be in that bucket that I use. Um, but that's that's the story on the rainbow shiners. So I'm super bummed that we have no rainbow shiners left. It was by far one of my favorite fish that I've worked on or worked with over the past year or two. And um, we, we did have, I, I would say, um, around a dozen, maybe more adults when I put them in the IBC tote. I did not get any fry from them at all. 
In fact, this is what was in the bucket with them, which survived. And uh, if you can see, it might be kind of difficult. Uh, these are not rainbow shiner fry. In fact, these are all white clouds. So more white clouds. And uh, there's even one or two, there's a, a, a juvenile golden white cloud. Uh, the rest look like they're mostly just regular uh, white clouds. And uh, herein lies the problem um, because tiny fish were able to get out the overflows through the filtration system, pump back up into the wrong IBC tote, uh, we have these hitchhikers which got into the wrong IBC totes. Um, and, and that, um, not, a, not a big concern, you know, rainbow shiners versus white clouds are very easy to tell apart. Um, even the golden white clouds versus regular white clouds are pretty easy to tell apart, but the Vietnamese white clouds and the regular white clouds are a little trickier to tell apart. So now I have the fun task of going through fish by fish here uh, with all of these tanks, but especially the Vietnamese white clouds to confirm which ones are actually Vietnamese white clouds uh, because I don't want any crossbreeding going on. Uh, luckily, because those fry were so small, when they went through those overflows and got pumped back in, they were definitely not breeding signs, so I don't think I have any hybridization going on. But it does um, illustrate some failings of my return system uh, in those IBC totes. So next year, I'm gonna need to work on that the need to either add an overflow screen to keep them from going out and over. Um, I may need to add some sort of um, sock, like filter sock on the return line to make sure that uh, anything that's getting pumped back into the tank isn't contaminating the tank with different species. Um, and it also looks like I'm gonna need to add some air to those IBC totes um, because that may have also played an issue. So um, that's the story here. I'm not super thrilled with the productivity this season out in the greenhouse. Um, I'm gonna chalk it up to two things. Um, the first is those breeder baskets that I started with. I think they were too small and I tried them out for about a month. I wasn't seeing any results. And so essentially I lost the first month of the breeding season uh, outdoors and it's already a short season being that I'm in the Northeast. So that was kind of a fail. The other component which uh, I wasn't super happy with is actually the, the numbers of fish. And the one thing I'm gonna try next year is I'm gonna completely scrub out the bottoms of all of the IBC totes to make sure there isn't any um, leftover mulm, residue, bacteria, anything. I'm gonna like completely sanitize them before I start them back up next year. Uh, to make sure that the entire bottom surface of those IBC totes is uh, pristine and um, ready for eggs to sort of fall on that surface and not be infected with any fungus or anything else that might cause them to, uh, to not make it. Um, one other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start with the right number of fish and I'll probably narrow it down. In fact, as you can see, I'll probably exclusively work with white clouds, just the regular white clouds next year. It may be boring, um, but it's the thing that I've seen success with. So I'm going to try to uh, optimize that success and figure out um, the rest of the, the failing points before extending into uh, other species. So anyways, guys, that's a look at the results from this year's outdoor summer tubbing greenhouse IBC breeding project. A little bit of a mixed bag, but we definitely learned some lessons and uh, hopefully we can apply those to next year because we always want to improve. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you later. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a like, please subscribe, but also please check out Nature Forged Aquatics on Amazon. You can check out products like this the Nature Forge Aquatics Alder Cones, which is a great product to add to your blackwater tanks, to your shrimp tanks, to your soft water aquariums, 
provides natural tannins, allows you to naturally and slowly drop the pH in your aquariums. It's a great product. This is a four ounce bag. It has tons of cones in it. It will last you a very long time. It also helps support this channel because Nature Forest Aquatics is my brand. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later.